apply. No, 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 it's applique. No, it's apply. No, 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 applique. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want things to sound a little bit more fancy, you throw a French accent in. So I guess it's called applique. Let's get started. <laughs> and today's block is brought to you by, yeah, whatever this concoction is. Uh, let's see. We have kale. Yep, kale, cucumber, some flaxseed, and water. Let's see how this one turned out. Okay. Um, mm. I like the nutty flutter, nutty flutter. I like the nutty flavor from the flaxseed, but mm, I don't know about everything else, but it'll do for now. Mm. Hmm. Now on to today's block. So throughout this series, we've done quite a variety of different types of blocks and used different types of techniques. We've done crumb quilting, we've done string quilt blocks, we've done some traditional blocks, we've also done some strips or strip sets, and now we're going into a different style of quilting. One that, well, personally, I like to do. It's called applique. I tend to think that applique is sort of like a gateway into art quilts because, well, when you do applique work, it's usually more artistic. It's more pictorial. In fact, a lot of the award-winning quilt artists will use applique techniques in their award-winning quilts. You know, I remember the first time that I went to the Houston International Quilt Festival, there was a quilter that had an exhibition there. His name was Danny Amazonas. And if you've never seen a quilt from him, look him up. You can Google his name, um, you know, and I was just blown away with what he could do with fabric. Yeah. And since then, I've been in love with these art quilts because, well, it kind of opens up the possibilities of what you can do with just pieces of fabric. Yeah, it does take talent and a lot of practice though, so. Not something everyone can do, but today in this block, I'm going to, let's just say, introduce you to the idea or a technique of applique. Now, applique has a hundred different types of techniques and a hundred even more different types of tools that you can use. Everything from fusible webs to interfacing or fusible interfacing uh, there's also special types of tools, like if you know of the Appliquick tools. Yeah, I got a set somewhere. Um, there's special irons even that I've seen. So the technique that we're going to do today does not require a whole ton of special tools. In fact, you probably already have these tools in your sewing supplies or, well, they're kind of household items. Well, at least I hope they're household items. I've never used this particular technique before, so I'm hoping that it is gonna work. Someone told me it works. And I'm gonna trust this person. So, without further ado, let's talk about the fabrics. So this is a sample block that I was, that I made in preparation for today's, or this week's block, and so, I, it's supposed to be a flower. I know it kind of just looks like a pink colored sunny side egg, <laughs> but that was not my intention with it. Hopefully this, the real block, will come out a lot better. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Basically, when you do an applique block or an applique style, it's basically you cut a fabric shape of something, in this case, 
somewhat of a flower. You put it on a background piece of fabric and you stitch it down. Now, in this case, I got multiple pieces here, but that's basically the philosophy of applique. You take it, you cut it into a certain shape, put it on a background and you stitch it down. In this week's block, hopefully you don't need any of those special materials. Well, if you have them, you can use them if you want to, but if you don't have it, you might be able to get through this block without purchasing some of those specialty things. Here's what we're gonna need to make this block. First of all, this let's talk about this background fabric for a second. Now, the block size that I'm aiming for is 12 and a half inches, but I cut the background fabric to 13 inches. And I do that because when you start putting or when you start placing your fabrics down and you start stitching them down, sometimes it can sort of distort the ending size of the background fabric. So it's always better safe than sorry to make it a little bigger and then trim it down when you're done. Now, in terms of the fabrics, well, I just went through my scrap bins and I pulled out some, well, this pink and the purple. These are both five inch squares. And I'm gonna use this kind of yellowish two and a half inch square. And then to make my leaves and my stems, I just went through my crumb bin and pulled out whatever green fabric colored I had. You can choose whatever colors you can make the flower petal as big as you want or as small as you want. Hey, it's your block. You make it your own. The other thing you'll need is some kind of a marking tool. Now this is a sew line fabric pen. It's basically a chalk pen in a pencil form where I can just kind of use it to mark on the fabric, but you don't need something like that. You can use a regular pen like this now. Okay, let me kind of explain this. I always have the need to use a red pen and a black. And whenever I need the red, I always find the black. Whenever I need the black, I always have the red. So I figure let's just take these two pens together and wherever one is, the other one will be. That's just how I operate. So if I need the black side, I use the black pen. Whenever I need the red pen, I flip it over. Yeah. But anyway, point being, you can just use a regular pen. This doesn't have to be a special tool. Or if you got a pencil, just use a pencil. I'm going to be using Eileen's Tacky Glue here. You don't have to use this particular brand. Just using regular white or even Elmer's glue. Um, that'll work just fine. You just want it. It's just going to be used to just kind of temporarily hold the fabrics down while you're working and before you stitch it down. I got this at Dollar Tree, believe it or not, for only a dollar. Well, now it would be a dollar twenty-five, but you know, check out your dollar store. They might have these glues available. If not, just get some regular Elmer's glue or whatever white glue they got. This is the wild card because a good friend of mine said, hey, if you're gonna do an applique block, try using some of these. What is this? It's a dryer sheet. The stuff you stick in with your laundry as you put it through the dryer. Yep, that's what this is. And I thought she was kind of crazy, but then when I kind of thought about it, kind of makes sense. We're gonna give it a shot. Normally when you get dryer sheets from the dryer, it's all crinkled up like this. So how did I get it to be so flat like this? Well, just stretch it out as best as you can Take it to the iron, put some fabric or a pressing sheet over it and just run the iron over it. Comes out nice and flat and usable like this. Let's see if this technique works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gonna take some getting used to. Ooh. Okay, let's start making our applique pieces here. Now I have a choice or a decision. I know that this yellow fabric is gonna go in the center or become the center of my flower. Do I wanna do the pink and then the purple 
or do I want to do the purple, then the pink? I think I like it with the purple in the background. So let's work with the purple here for a second. I'm going to mark the back of the purple fabric and I am not going to be so careful about this. I'm just going to do somewhat of an oblong shape. And I know you can't see the mark because I can barely even see it. So I know the camera is probably not going to pick up on it very well. Let me see if I can switch to the white. Yeah, that'll look better. So yeah, that's much, that's a little better, but I'm just marking a line here. And this line is what we are going to sew on. You don't have to be so exact. I'm just doing kind of a generalized sort of, how would you say, like an elliptical shape? Kind of a curved square, not so much a circle, but just a general kind of funky shape here. If you have a flower, flower pattern that you want to make this or you want to make with this quilt or this block go ahead but yeah i'm trying to be a little bit artiste so i'm not going to make it a perfect uh, perfect circle and i'm definitely not making it a perfect flower shape so i kind of got a general outline here um, i know the camera probably can't pick up on it so much but i just got a general outline of a shape here where it's kind of not really a square, but not really a circle. It's kind of a curved circle here. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to take my, where's my dryer sheets that I put? I'm just going to take one of these dryer sheets there. And I'm going to put the right side of the fabric facing the dryer sheet. And we'll take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch right on that line that I drew. So what I did was just, I drew my somewhat of a circular shape and took it to the sewing machine. I put the fabric, right side of the fabric facing this dryer sheet and I stitched right on that drawn line. Now I know you can barely kind of see it in the camera, but trust me, it's there. With this yellow square here, I'm going to do the same thing where I am going to draw a general outline shape. And as you can kind of see, I'm not doing a perfect circle. I'm just kind of doing like a curved square type of thing. Of course, if you want to make circles, you can very well go ahead and do that. And it's not even a perfect circle or it's not even a perfect square. It's kind of funky shaped here. So I'm going to do the same thing with this yellow. I'm going to stitch it, put it face down or right side down facing the dryer sheet. And we're going to stitch right on that line that I just drew. So let's stitch this down. Got the middle part done. So started here when stitched all around came back to the beginning now when you come back to the beginning you might want to overlap your stitches maybe about a quarter to a half an inch just to kind of secure it down a little bit that way if you don't um, or if you prefer to you can kind of do a back stitch when you start and you stop but i just prefer to sew all the way around and then just overlap the stitches either way will work fine what do we do with this then? So I'm going to grab my rotary cutter first and I'm just going to kind of do a rough cut just to separate the pieces there. I'm going to grab my scissors and we're just going to trim down the bulk here in the corners as well as the excess dryer sheet fabric here. We'll trim it down. Now you don't want to get too close to the seam. You can do, or you can do about a quarter inch. It does not have to be exact. 
We'll do the same thing with this yellow piece here. We're just trimming it down, trimming down all of that excess bulk. Now the main thing is you do not want to cut through the line that you just stitched because that would be disastrous. There we go. So we got two of our pieces done. Now, the side with the dryer sheet, here's what you're going to do. You're just going to pull the two parts or pull the fabric away from the dryer sheet. You're going to make a little slit or just cut a hole in the dryer sheet part. Don't cut a hole in the fabric part. Okay. Cut the hole on the dryer sheet side. Okay. So here's my hole and we're just going to turn this inside out and we're going to pull the right side of the fabric out. There we go. And what do you know? Okay, you can get in, put your finger in. You can slide your finger in there just to poke out the seam all the way out. Okay, if you have one of those turning things like the purple fang, <laughs> I love that name, the purple fang. <laughs> Whoever came up with that, thumbs up to you. You got a good sense of humor. Because I love saying that. The purple fang. For me, I just use my little seam ripper here. There's a ball point or there's a ball edge or ball, yeah, ball point. And I just use that to turn it out. Nothing fancy. You could also use a barbecue stick or barbecue skewer, chopstick, whatever you have, just to kind of poke out the, the corners here, or just kind of smooth that seam out. And there you go. You have an applique piece right there. So again, with the smaller yellow piece here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna separate the dryer sheet from the fabric, cut a hole in the dryer sheet, Turn it inside out. So now we're going to get the right side of the fabric to kind of pull that through. We're going to turn it inside out, pull all of that through. Don't worry about ripping the dryer sheet. It's just a dryer sheet. Let's get my little and kind of push out the seams there, there. Hmm. Now my fingers smell snuggly fresh. I feel like the little bear bouncing in the lounge laundry. <laughs> Snuggle fabric. Okay. Not fooling around. Okay. So we got two pieces. We still have to do the pink. Now with the pink, I do want to layer it a little smaller than the purple because we want that as our second layer. So I'm going to use the purple to sort of outline where, how big that, that is. Whoops. So I'm going to just draw a rough outline of this purple. Okay. So here's the line. Let me make it a little bit darker. I know, sorry. I know you probably can't see it in the camera. Well, let me see if it does the darker one work. So basically with this pink fabric, we want to make it smaller than the purple, but bigger than the center or this yellow. So we want to be somewhere in between. So I think if we go maybe about here, okay, now that's really coming out. And again, this does not have to be a perfect circle or a perfect square. You can just be artsy about it. Or if you can see the line there, that was the outline of the purple fabric. This darker line here, this, that is the line that I'm actually going to stitch on. So we're going to sew on the last piece here, but I kind of figured I should give you an up close look as to how I'm sewing it. I'm just going to start sewing. And when you sew on curves, you don't have to be 
Speedy Gonzalez. When you feel like the curve is, whoops. When you feel like the curve is getting away from you or the line is getting away from you, just stop, put your needle down, lift up your presser foot, shift the fabric around and continue sewing. Again, this is not a race. Okay, I'm stopping there. I'm gonna lift it up. There we go. Now I can kinda go a little faster there. You can kinda turn your fabrics, but again, I feel like my line's running away from me, so I'm gonna put the needle down, lift up the presser foot, and just take it slow. Okay, one more stitch there. And again, if you go off the line, no big deal. It's not gonna be the end of the block. It was going a little fast there, but now we're coming up to where we started. And let me put the needle down. Right here at this point is where we started stitching. And we got a little bit ways to go. Now I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna try and stitch, continue stitching all the way to maybe about here. Then I'm gonna stop. And so that'll just kind of secure all of these stitches down. Okay, so I'm just stitching right up, right on top of my previously stitched line. That looks good. So now I can take the whole unit off, cut my threads, and I can sew on to little piece of scrap here just to catch my thread. And then I'm going to trim off these excess threads here. Trim that one off. And we got our last applique piece, well, last applique petal all sewn. So we got the piece here. We're gonna do the same thing, just like how we did with the other pieces. We'll start by trimming away the excess. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it to about a quarter inch. Doesn't have to be perfect. But try not to make it too narrow either. Okay. For some reason, this came out to be a much better circular shape. Not that I intended it to. Now, this I can put in a crumb bin. This is just, well, trash. And again, I'll take the dryer sheet, separate it from the fabric. Cut a hole in the dryer sheet side, not the fabric side now. I know somebody's gonna cut the fabric side. And we'll turn it inside out. And I can use my finger to kind of push out the seam. Okay, that looks pretty good. But I'm gonna just take my little ballpoint seam ripper Push that out a little better. There we go. Now, it's not a perfect circle, doesn't have to be, and I didn't want or intend for it to be. So we got all of these pieces done. And, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I kind of like it. Now, let me pull in the background fabric for a second. And we'll lay our purple piece. We'll lay pink one and we'll put the yellow. Now the pink piece actually came out a little bit smaller than I intended to, but that's all right. Now onto the stems. So I just have a piece of green scrap here. 
Um, I think I'm gonna use this as a stem. And what I'm basically doing is I'm just folding it. I think this is about a two inch piece. Yeah, this is about two inches. So I'm just kind of folding it in thirds, just big enough to make a stem. Again, this, there's no precision to this or there's no rhyme or reason to it either. So here's my stem. So what I'm gonna do to make my leaves is I'm just gonna fold the fabric edges inward. Okay, I'm gonna fold it in. We'll hit this with the iron so that it can stay down a little better. And we'll just make some square out of it or some rectangular square shape. Now, if you want to make an actual leaf shape, by all means, go ahead and do so. I'm not going to do it. I'm just because I am an artist. So I'm trying to just do something a little bit more abstract. I'll put these pieces to the side. Now I'm going to take the glue. Again, you can use Elmer's glue. I'm using Eileen's tacky glue, but you can use Elmer's glue or whatever glue that you got. And I'm just going to put dots of it, not much, just dots of it on the wrong side of the fabric. And this is the piece that I'm going to use to create my stem. And it's just to temporarily hold the fabric down. Okay. It does not take much. In fact, it's just a little millimeter of a dot. That's all I'm putting down. Same thing with this, just putting a little bit of a dot fabric on both of these sides, just enough to, so I can press it down a little bit. Okay, you don't want to put too much glue because again, glue can bleed through the fabric and the one thing you don't want to have happen is it bleeding through the top side or the right side of the fabric. So just little small dabs of glue, just enough to hold it down. And do that here, as well as we'll do it on this side. And I can fold this side down. Not worrying about being exact, exact, exact. Take these pieces to the iron. We're gonna hit it with the iron so that it becomes flat and more secure. So here we have all of our pieces kind of, I took it all to the iron and kind of ironed them flat down. Now, when you do have little bits of pieces that stick out from the back here, you can take your scissors and I'm just gonna trim it so that it's not seen, that's fine. Now, in terms of the stem, this top part of the stem is gonna be hidden under all of the petals. So I'm not even gonna worry about the fraying or how this top part looks, but I wanna create a little bit of a finished look here at the bottom. So I am gonna put, let's see, I'm gonna fold this a little bit just kind of finger press it back just a little bit. And then we'll hit it with the glue. Press it down. And then we'll take this to the iron and iron that part flat. Now that bottom is nice and clean looking. Um, minus all these frays that all of a sudden appeared. I'm just gonna chop that off. Okay, so we got all those pieces down. Now let's take our petals, let's iron those flat, and let's start assembling. We ironed down flat all of our applique pieces here. And so now we just need to kind of rearrange them. So 
Since the stem is the bottom piece, that's the first piece that I'm gonna lay down. Now when a shape is not perfect, like if it's not a perfect circle or maybe you cut it wrong, in this case, I intentionally didn't make it perfect, but when it's not perfect, one way to actually hide it, I find, put it at an angle. If you put it straight up and down, or if you put it straight horizontally, you know, the misshape is very, very noticeable. But when you put it at an angle, sometimes just the fact that it's at an angle, you can't tell that it's misshaped. Now, this is a pretty bad misshape because I intentionally did it that way, but just a little trick that I've learned over the years. I am going to actually put it at an angle like this with the two leaves like that. Looks more like a lollipop, if you ask me, or a little sucker. Okay, so this is the layout that I'm gonna do it. Now, for me, I tend to glue my pieces down to the background. You don't have to. If you want to, you can pin it down, that's also fine. Or if you don't feel like you need the glue, you don't have to use it. You can just hold the piece down. But now what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna top stitch all of these pieces down. So we're gonna start with the stem here. We're gonna stitch as close to the edge as we can. Then I'll add this purple piece here. We'll, again, we'll stitch as close as to the edge as we can. We'll put our pink piece, stitch as close as to the edge as well. We'll put the yellow, again, stitching around the edges. Then we'll add the leaves here, stitching around the edges here. Now, I'm gonna be using a straight stitch because my machine can only do a straight stitch. But if you have one of those machines that have 60,000 stitches, well, you can either do a short leg zigzag. You could also do what is called the, uh, the applique stitch. Um, you could also do, you know, you can choose whatever stitch you wanna do. But for me, I'm just doing a straight stitch. You can also do a straight stitch if you want to. Now, if you are gonna do a zigzag or an applique stitch, you want one stitch to actually go onto the applique piece. Then you want the next stitch to actually go on the background. And you wanna get that stitch as close to the edge of the applique piece as possible. So if you choose to do a zigzag stitch, it'll go stitch on the applique piece, stitch off into the background stitch on to the applique piece, stitch off into the background. And try and get a very, as much as possible, a narrowest zigzag or the narrowest width, somewhere around a 1.5 millimeter usually works good, or maybe a one millimeter. Just play around with the settings on your machine. This is actually a good time to Take a look at your scrap bin and just try and test out different stitches, see which one you like to do. Main part of it is to just kind of get these applique pieces stitched down onto the background. Now, if you're using a straight stitch, well, try and stitch as close to the edge of the applique piece as you possibly can, maybe even 1 16th of an inch. On my test block here, so notice how close I went to the edge here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because look how wide it became there, but just try and get as close to the edge as you possibly can. All right, let's start stitching our applique pieces down to the background.
And here is my funky flower applique block. Well, that's what I'm calling it because this is a very funky flower. As I said at the beginning of this video, I wanted to make a 12 and a half inch block. So that's where I squared it down to. Now you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. It's your quilt. You do what you want to do with it. Now, if you want to even make your petals bigger, or if you even want to make your petals a different shape, hey, be creative. Don't follow exactly what I did if you don't want to. Do it how you want to do it. This is sim a simple technique that you can do with just some basic things and some household items that I hope you have in your house. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy making your funky flower applique block. And well, I hope you enjoy exploring the world of applique quilts because it can open the door to a whole nother side of quilting, just like it did for me. And as always, go out and create something. I am dying. That's hot. Oh. Okay, what am I saying? Da, 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 da. I don't know what to say. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications on when I upload the next video. Put a comment down below saying what you liked or maybe even what you didn't like. And join the Facebook discussion group at Treasure Heart Creations. You can post pictures of the blocks that you created or just scroll through and gather inspiration from other Treasure Heart Creation Group members. And from time to time, there are giveaways exclusively for Treasure Heart Creation Group members. So use the link in the description box below to sign up. If you're on Instagram, post pictures of the blocks that you're working on using the hashtag THC5252. Well, that's it for now. Now go out and create something.